Okay.
afternoon and welcome to the Hong Kong Wine and Dine Festival on Air Tastings organized by the Hong Kong Tourism Board. I'm Alison Howe and it's so wonderful to see you all here again. This year we will continue to share with you the latest trends in wine and delicacies. But instead of staying in the indoor kitchen, we are going to take you around different restaurants in our town. Now first, our guest today, he happens to be a global wine critic and throughout his 40 years of history as a journalist and a wine critic, he has hosted thousands of classes, reaching out to fans and wine lovers from around the world. We are downstairs from his restaurant, so come over to find out who it is. Wine enhances your life. It brings people to the table. It's something to share with friends and family. It's amazing. Festival. Well, thank you very much and welcome to James Suckling Wine Central. It's great to be here. Oh, before I talk about how beautiful this place is, again, thank you so much for joining us again at the festival. We learned so much from you last year and I'm sure that we have so many questions for you. But first, I would also like to give a warm welcome to our online friends who purchased the tasting kit earlier on and will be joining us for our online tasting in just a second. Hi, everybody. Would you like to say hi to everyone Hello. joining us online as <laughs> hi, well? James. Hi. Hello. Hi, James. Oh, brilliant. We will get to your questions later on as well. But first, I got to say a big congratulations to James because you received the French National Order of Merit at the residence of the French Consul General in Hong Kong back in June. No, thank you so much. And I was so excited to get this award from the French con Consul, but it actually came from President Macron. Wow. And it was really for my 40 years covering France and tasting French wines, and really my love of French wine, that's my wife uh, with the medal. And it, you know, I, I had to cry, really. It was such a wonderful moment with my friends and family to share this special award from the French government. And I don't know, I, you know, I love France, and it's a real reference point for me for fine wines. I lived there from 1985 to 1988, mm. and it's still so deep in my heart, my mind. No, it's really something very, very special. Oh, well, congratulations. You, you definitely deserve it. You. Like you said, we are broadcasting from James Suckling's Wine Central. What a gorgeous place you have here. No, thank you. It's actually my wife's restaurant. I don't know. I just work here for free. <laughs> so. It's just a naming title. <laughs> That's what you do. Oh, this but, is no, such an awesome place. I'm imagining like great times must have been had so many times yeah, here. Yeah, and all those bottles are actually, that's, some people joke and say it's the wall of shame, mm. but I like to think of it as my wall, and it changes all the time with fantastic bottles yeah. I've drunk with friends and just wines that are amazing to drink, and that's just part of uh, the enjoyment of wine. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm just seeing right immediately from our background, this whole wall is just a great memory of what has been happening here. So thank you for oh, hosting thank us you. here. Thank you. Now, I also have some great news for everybody joining us for the on-air tasting today because pay attention to the content later on and you might be able to win yourself a prize. A prize which is going to the fastest 10 people who answer our question later on correctly at the end of the program. We will be having a chance for you to win two tickets for jamesuckling.com masterclass per winner and 20 tickets valued at $30,000. Participants online must be residents of Hong Kong and you must be over 18 years of age. Good yeah, luck, good everybody. Luck. Good luck. I look forward to seeing you at the master class. Yes. Now, today, our theme for the On Air Tastings is On Premier 2020 Tasting. So, James, would you like to introduce the tasting kit to us? Absolutely. So, the first wine we'll be tasting is, is La Cabane which is a, a beautiful wine from Palmerol. Mm. Then we uh, move close by to saint Emilion to a wine called uh, Chateau uh, Repo, mm -hmm. small chateau. Then we move across to Chateau Cantemera. And then we go to Chateau Lascombe, just a little bit farther north. 
And finally, to Chateau Félin Segur. Wonderful, Wonderful wine. So we're gonna taste some awesome wines. And it's pretty crazy. They're all straight from the barrels. They were flown over here Ooh. a few uh, weeks ago. So very, very special This tasting. is absolutely special. And without further ado, I'm gonna come straight to our online friends to give you a little test. James kind of gave it away earlier on, but why do you think that these lines are stored in test tubes instead of the usual bottles that we see in the market. Does anybody want to have a guess? Why do you think our tasting kit is stored in test tubes? Uh, Ming, go ahead. Would you like to unmute yourself? <laughs> so that we can hear you. Because it's straight from the barrel. Why do you think they are stored in test tubes? Because it's straight from because the barrel. You've been listening. <laughs> He, he, he might be a ringer. Maybe he's already been to Bordeaux I and know. tasted from Barrel. We'll have to see his <laughs> comments soon. <laughs> Before we hear from the expert, the official answer, I'd love to ask James, where do you see Hong Kong in terms of wine position in the world right now? Well, Hong Kong is a really a fantastic city for wine. Um, in fact, I'm a permanent resident here. Hey. Uh, and so I think that I hope that I add actually to the dynamics of the city. But Hong Kong, I put up there with uh, New York and London as far as one of the world's great um, wine cities, maybe Paris as well. Mm. But we're number one in the world for wine auctions. And we're also number one in the world for exports from Bordeaux, which wow. is crazy, bigger than where I was born in the United States, which is pretty hard to even fathom. And it's great. It really shows that Bordeaux still rocks it here. Mm. Even though we have such an amazing selection of wines from all over the world, and I think that's thanks also to our no tax policy for wine. This is, was a really big change in the marketplace. And that's really why I originally moved here from Italy to start my business at jamesuckling.com. And I'm happy to be here. Oh, well, great to have you here. Oh, so you. glad that you're even permanent residents, which is such an achievement. No, thank you. So now let's talk about these on Premier. What exactly are they? Why are they stored in test tubes? Yes, yeah, so this is... This is a really uh, high level tasting that consumers, particularly online, never get to do. Mm. And as I said earlier, the wines came straight from the barrel. And this is why it's called En Premier. En Premier meaning like your first chance to see the wines. In America, we call them futures. Oh. But it's actually the chance to taste from barrel and understand the new vintage and understand the quality, taste them a bit and have an idea about how the quality is. And you're gonna do that today because these wines won't be bottled until next year. Wow. And I've been doing tastings like this since 1983. I've been going to Bordeaux. I haven't been in two years for obvious reasons with mm. the pandemic, but the last time I tasted was the uh, 2018 from Barrel. Right. And this was going to Bordeaux, hanging out, but I've been doing a lot of tastings here now to replace that. But let, let's look at a video from tasting on Premier 2018. Yes, please. Take us to Bordeaux, James. Yeah, you're gonna see driving around all the time. By the way, I don't drink and drive, so I have a driver. <laughs> That's uh, my wife, Marie, at early morning start, 9 a.m. at Chateau Giscourt. We're tasting with the producers, the winemakers, as a journalist, talking about what happened with the vintage, what mm. they think of the wines. I taste something like 1,500 wines Whoa. in about two weeks. So it's pretty intense and really fun too, just to go to the wineries, see the vineyards, talk to the producers. That's Smith Olapit, which makes great red and whites um, in Pessac Réunion. But I do this with maybe 125 wineries and also then do huge tastings all over Bordeaux. Wow. So it's a lot of work. That is incredible though. It kind of feels like on Premier is an investment, like buying an unfinished property in a sense. Yes, yeah, so On Premier uh, a lot of times is a really good investment. If you buy early On Premier, meaning before the wine's on the market, mm -hmm. prices can go up. But also like any investment, prices can go down. Right. And if they start off really at a high price, then it's more difficult to uh, make it a great investment. I like to say with investing in wine, the first thing you gotta invest in is a corkscrew <laughs> because if your investment doesn't work <laughs> hey you can drink uh, you can drink the wine wow. and i can tell you i have normal stocks and equities and 
I don't get half the fun as I do with wine. That's awesome. So you mentioned that it wasn't really able to physically do the wine tours for on premieres. No, absolutely. Years. So uh, this year with 2020, um, and actually last year, the Chateau sent samples. They send by DHL, FedEx. It's really easy because of our no tax. It's probably easier to send wines from Bordeaux to Hong Kong than to Paris, wow. which is pretty crazy, but it works so well. And so I tasted this year uh, 1,500 samples. You can see I'm tasting here with are. some wine merchants. Uh, and it was right here in this room where wow. we are today. And then lots of Zoom calls, 50 Zoom calls. Then we would cut uh, the videos and put them on Instagram and uh, Facebook and our website. But it was just like being there, mm. but no jet lag. <laughs> I was so stoked. Like I was just tasting perfectly and no huge dinners when I'd wake up the next morning tired. So it was really awesome. That photo is to keep the wines at the perfect temperature. It was much more in control, and I really enjoyed just tasting here. Oh, that's incredible. We get to have a little taste of that in just a minute. But first, like I said, if you have any questions for James, go ahead and type it in the chat box, and we'll get to them throughout the show. And immediately, we've got Hugo from the chat box asking, what is the price range for buying on Premier 2020? Yeah, I think you're gonna be surprised, but the price range can be from anything like five euros a bottle to up to $3,000 or 3,000 euros a, a, a bottle. But that's because Bordeaux has such a big range of wines. You could have anything like the super rare Le Pain or Chateau Petrus to something really inexpec inexpensive. I can't even, you know, Chateau Maine or whatever. And, and that's what's so amazing about Bordeaux is the range of wines and the range of price points. Mm. But in a great vintage like 2020, everything is excellent. That's the cool thing about 20 and also 19 and 20. Oh, this is exciting. You're making us even more excited yeah, to no, try what we have in the tasting kit today. Yeah. I think we are ready. Are our online friends ready to actually try out some on premiere? But let me let me give you one quick thing, just some background on why 20 was so great. Ooh, yes, but what happened was it was really cold and rainy until about June. And and they were really worried about the grapes they were gonna grow. And then from mid-June to September, it was dry, like 50 days of no rain. Wow. And so the grapes just ripened to perfection because they had the, the rain before and then it ripened beautifully the rest of the year. So you have wines with lots of fruit and ripe tannins. And that's what you're gonna see today. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how to taste on Premier when we taste the first wine. Ooh, this so is, let's do that. Yeah, this is truly exciting. We will get into the first bottle then. Shall we still call them bottles? Yep. So guys, make sure you have a La Caban. That's the first sample. That's from Palmerol. I think the we're gonna zoom in on there that. There you go. Yeah, check it out. You can see the logo. So don't mix them up. Excellent. Otherwise you have to be a blind taster. <laughs> so anyways, Open this up. All you know, right. the screw cap, there's none of that pop, so we're missing our cork bit. Oh, uh, but that's all right. I'm going to give a closer look for our online friends joining us so you can see the actual color. This yeah, is nice what it looks color. like up close, everyone. And that's when you're rating on Premier, it's just like any other wine. You look at the color, then you swirl it around to smell it. Okay. You can do this as well on the that's sometimes this is how you, I do if after you had like a few, a few glasses <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's what I do but swirl it around smell it Ooh. wow getting a lot of black fruits black cherries let's see you guys okay there yep they're they're yeah. swirling there's some real pro swirlers there I know good job excellent and then you taste it so shall we have a first taste everyone here we go Ken's already digging in I like it so <laughs> when you taste Look at the concentration. Is it medium bodied, full bodied? How do the tannins, tannins are phenolics from the skin. They give that chewiness. Just like if you had tea and you brewed it a long time. Mm. And then how does the acidity and the alcohol interplay with that? That's what I do as a professional wine critic. I taste probably 30 wines a day, 20, 30 wines a day. Right. Uh, and that's what you do here. And it's really important to see how the wine finishes 
Does it have a lot of taste at the end? Yeah, I think Eric is going through a lot of thought process right now. I want to come to you, Eric. What do you think about the first one? Um, I would say the, the aroma is really attractive and uh, it's coming with lots of black yes. food like what James mentioned um, really fresh very purity you can you can you can feel the you can feel the the, the black food and um, I, I was I was going to taste uh, actually longer for the aftertaste I mean the, the finish but uh, a, a slightly a bit of the savory aftertaste not that too too long but totally. very nice very I nice you, I can tell you're a good taster because you were swirling the wine around in your mouth a good yeah. way like this <laughs> Oh, learning from the yes. pros, yes. He was like doing that with his mouth. That puts oxygen into the wine and makes you get more flavor. Wow. And also helps the texture. So I think he's like, he's a ringer in this taste. I know. He must be a psalm or something. <laughs> Are you a psalm? Don't tell me. No. Don't, don't try to oh. say you're a banker, okay? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so Brilliant. this wine is, is mostly Merlot with a touch of Cabernet Franc. And uh, that's what the Merlot gives that soft and round texture mm. with lots of fruit. Oh. And it's, it's really savory, like, you, like Eric said, and sort of juicy at the end. It really makes you want to drink it. That's a great sign for a young wine. Shall we take a look at what the Chateau looks yeah, like? Yeah, let's see the Chateau. It's, the other thing behind the Chateau, it's family owned. So they do all the work themselves. It's only about five hectares, um, a little, a um, nice chateau that they live in and uh, you'll see look at it isn't it nice mm -hmm. I was there back for the 18 vintage Wow! I think there's a photo of me um, I look sort of a little take a look at it <laughs> that's the that's the winemaking room so that's where they ferment the wines Right. and then that's the personal cellar they have lots of old wines back to the 40s and the 50s that, that's always fun to uh, Great if they're doing a, a lunch, and that's me. Uh, and that's wow, I look really tired there and hung over actually. <laughs> but anyways, that's that was me a few years ago, and there's the owner. Oh, that's excellent. So it's really cool. It's, I really love you know the story behind the wines, and that's so important. You know, with wine in general, it's not just the fruit or the tannins or how many points I give it or mm -hmm. whatever. It's actually the story behind the wine. And that's what means a lot to me as a journalist. So let's go on to the next wine. All right. It's in saint Emile, so it's very close by. Uh, we could actually take a look at the map yes. where you get an idea where saint Emile is. So there's the town of Bordeaux, you can see. And off to the right is saint Emile and Pomerol. That's why we say right bank. And later we'll go to the left, which is the, uh, I guess, red part, and that's called the Medoc. But now we're off to the right. So you get right bank, traditionally right bank wines are more Merlot, while left bank are Cabernet Sauvignon. So we have Chateau Ripo now. Let's take a look. Make sure you get the right one. This is Chateau Ripo, everyone. It looks like it has some guy like making a barrel or something. Anyways, that's a repo, and that's from saint Emile, about 10 minute drive from La Caban, uh, from Caban, and you're gonna see a, a different character and texture to the wine. Mm. When you're tasting wines, really think about the texture. Think about the quality of the tannins. That's really important, that's what I do as a wine critic. But this wine has more Cabernet Franc. Oh, right. So you're gonna see a little bit different mouthfeel. It may be slightly less full-bodied, so look at the color. All right, everybody, go ahead. Guys, look, if you want to be pro, look like this. Never go like that, okay? <laughs> I always say that. You probably saw that in my master class. But anyway, so take a look at the color. Swirl it around. Okay. And it smells really different. More floral oh. or cherries. Do you see the difference? I do, immediately. Yeah, maybe wow. like crushed stones, like you were walking in the vineyard in a hot afternoon. And let's see how it tastes. All right, everyone, shall we have a taste? A lot different. I'm getting more like herbal Ooh, character. Maybe this is very nice. Even some rose petals and cherries. It's really different. And structurally, it's different. It's more linear, fresh, vibrant. The, the first wine was much richer in the palate, like you really had more fruit. Yeah. 
So. Wow. I want to see how our online friends think about the second taste day. Arjun, shall we come to you? How's it going over there? What the difference between the... If you can unmute yourself, the then we'll be able to hear you. There you are. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? There you go. Is You're fine. Good? Yes. Yeah. No, you can make out the, dif the difference in the texture and the flavor of the wine immediately. And uh, even on the nose, it's uh, quite different, like James was saying, uh, more floral, herbal. Yes. And um, I, I, I think the first one was probably more well-balanced because maybe it uh, was more Merlot. And this one, although it's delicious, but uh, maybe it's less round than the first one. But it's, I think it's also very elegant, very elegant uh, wine. That's nice. really good. And that's exactly how I see it. Also, one thing to think about is in great years like this, you're probably surprised how drinkable they are. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So don't think that it barrel samples have to be really big, bad, and undrinkable. Mm. You know? that's uh, They actually have to be balanced and uh, beautiful. That's fantastic. Shall yeah. we also take a look at the Chateau? You mentioned it's a very close yeah, so, to each other. Um, Repo is actually uh, very much like La Cabane. And uh, it's small, family owned, mm. a small vineyard. It's very close to the town of uh, saint Right. So let's take a look at the photos. That's the, uh, that's the inside where the barrels are. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see that's the whole winery. There's hardly any wine there. It's a tiny production. Then they have the little winemaking facilities, uh, really beautiful. And uh, and look at the chateau. Nothing. Oh, wow. It could like it could be just a normal house. Yeah. And then at night, this beautiful entrance. I remember it was renovated just a few years ago. Right. And that's at the bar. You can actually visit there. You don't have to make too many uh, calls. But look, isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna move to uh, the Medoc. Oh yes. And. Uh, that's about, from saint Tibion, about an hour and a half drive. And in the Medoc is where you have appellations like Margot, mm. Poyac, saint Estep, Saint-Julien. And it's based mostly with Cabernet Sauvignon. Right. So you're going to get more structured wines. Let's take a look again at the uh, map just so you get your bearing again. So you'll see the... Yeah, the... Uh, Let's see, it should come on. There you go. Yes. So you'll see that red part on the left, yes. and that's the whole Medoc. And then there's sub appellations such as O Medoc, Margot, um, Saint Julien, Poyac, and Saint Estep. We'll be tasting a number of those. Excellent. And I already explained right bank and left bank, so you should really have a handle on that. So um, let's taste um, Cantemar, Chateau Cantemar. You'll see. And this is really fairy tale. Oh, look at that! Chateau. It's even in the tube. You can see it. And what a wonderful place. Uh, and the wines are quite structured. Really good value too. Mm. Normally, I think in a place like Watson's, you can pick up current vintage for like two fifty a bottle. Ooh. And they age incredibly well. Fantastic! I'm excited yeah. to see this one. I'm going to bring on my close-up camera again so that everybody I'll pour can myself have a quick look first because it's easier. Wow! Look at the color of that. Yeah, and and it, it's you you nailed it right away. Look how it's darker in color. Yes. That's because Cabernet Sauvignon has thicker skins, and they always make darker colored wines than Merlot or Cabernet Franc. So that's really interesting. And let's uh, look at the color. It's really opaque almost inky yes right so let's smell it okay some common things you get with cabernet is uh currants her fresh herbs uh let's see if it has that sometimes graphite Ooh, that's interesting it's really different yes. and you're getting i get lots of fresh herbs like i don't know um, some thyme and uh, and again i'm getting the currants I want to also come to our online friends to see what you think of our third wine that we're tasting. Kit, what do you make of this? Do you like number three? Hello. I'm not going to give yes. you my impression, so let's see what you say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to put you on the test. What do you make of 
just by the way of how it is hitting the nose and the taste of it, what do you get? Um, I think a bit uh, herbal, as Jim said, and then a bit earthy as well, and a bit uh, oaky. Yeah, that's, as you said. that's actually really good. I get that too. Like wet earth. Yeah. Like in the morning, if you're hiking in like new territories and you can smell like the soil or the, you know, the trees and you almost mushroom character. Really cool. Very good, interesting. Good descriptors. Also, when you're tasting wine, don't get hung up on descriptors. Like if I say currants, blackberries, you're getting raspberries, who knows what. That's just for you to remember the wine. Mm. I think that's important. I like to always say that in master classes that there's no wrong answer in how you describe a wine. As far as texture, is it full bodied? How long is it? Like you taste it, how long does it last? Well, that's, that's more like studied and there should be agreement on that. But don't get hung up on describing wines. It's just mm. something for you to remember the wine. And I think this wine has beautiful structure. Mm. It's gonna age really well. And I like the quality of the tannins. They're very polished. And I think that, you know, that's really showing the quality of 2020. Excellent. I'm just noticing out of our five different wines that we're tasting today, this is actually the only one, I think, that puts the actual Chateau on the bottle. Yeah, let's see. Um, obviously, no, this uh, Lascombe has ah, it as well. Right, you're right. So we'll, we'll get to that next. But actually, I'm really liking this wine. Actually, I'm going to have another sip <laughs> while you're having another sip normally i look? normally i'm spitting <laughs> if it's uh, you know if i'm tasting a hundred wines in a day i'll taste and there'll be a little bucket and i spit into it right and then i write the note on a computer but today we're having fun yeah. and just really learning the you know the basics of tasting barrel samples and you can use this if you go to napa if you go to barossa valley anywhere you, now you're just gonna, you know, go in there and just seem like a pro. Yeah. Just like, yeah, the texture's not what I was thinking. <laughs> the color is in order. So you should be able to really impress the winemakers themselves. Drop in those. And if you could tell what their vineyards look like, you will definitely sound like a total pro. Yeah, exactly. Shall we have a look? So, uh, again, isn't that beautiful? You can see it in the wow. distance, Cantermara. It's really fairy tale like I first visited there in 1983 mm. during Vien Expo. Wow. Like, I, don't, I can't even do the math. I'm so old. I was actually young then. I was in my 20s. <laughs> but I remember it so vividly, and there was a black tie dinner right there on the outside. It was just so gorgeous. But it's such a beautiful vineyard, and it's quite a large vineyard, and they make uh, quite a bit of wine there. Wow. It would, it, it would be about five to eight times larger than the uh, last two. Excellent. Mm. I really like this one. So let's move to the next one. So now we're moving about 20 minutes uh, north um, up to the Appalachian of Margot. It's Chateau Lascombe. Which I think for most of the Hong Kong wine lovers would be quite familiar with this one. Yeah. And Lascombe you can find uh, also here readily. Yeah. And what I like about Lascombe is it um, it's a winery or chateau that makes wines that drink really well young. Oh. So I think you'll be impressed. Like now, uh, being 63, I'm getting worried about buying young wines. I don't want to have to age them for 10 years for obvious <laughs> reasons. But like you guys are all young in Hong Kong. So uh, we'll invest that's, it for you. that's fine. But anyways, you can drink this young. Thank and you. I think that people like drinking young wine more mm. than in the, you know, in the olden times before internet and mobile phones. So that's when I was like in my 20s. All but anyways, right. uh, let's check this out. Again, dark color. It's probably, I think it's around 60% Cabernet. That's why you're getting that dark black currant or yeah. uh, black, almost a uh, purple color. Let's smell it. Okay. Wow, and it really, it's really floral oh. and primary. It really smells just like crushed grapes that are fermenting and like primary means just you know, like like the grape itself. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, these uh, these tubes really maintain the quality. I don't think we're gonna start buying wines in tubes, though. <laughs> it doesn't sort of like turn me on, like hearing a pop from a uh, cork or something. You look more like a scientist. Yeah, well, oh, we all take my tube to to the restaurant. Yes, but, but I want to see how David feels. You seem to be taking notes already, David. So share your thoughts with us. What do you make of our fourth wine today? 
Well, actually, I drank, I drank, uh, I mean, I drank Lascombe quite a bit, but as compared to the last three, this one I found is quite dry as compared to maybe uh, similar to a Lucky Band, maybe the, because this first one, the one I, when I, when I drank the uh, Lucky Band, I found it's quite dry and also quite similar taste like plum and blackberry and oaky, a kind of, kind of flavor. So, yeah, that's, sorry, Jane. Go ahead. That's interesting because I think you're getting the Merlot in this wine. I think, as I remember, their Merlot's are around between 30 and 40 percent. So you would be getting some of that plum character like in the La Caban. And when you talk about uh, the dryness, that's the tannins and also uh, some of the wood tannins because they're still in barrel. Right. So that gives you this dryness. So um, anyways, what, how you're describing the wine is very good because I get that too. And the dryness is at the finish of the mm. wine where it's just a little bit dry. But that's not a problem because uh, they'll also fine this wine a little bit with some uh, some egg whites, and it'll soften up a bit. But I think that it's in a good uh, good place now. But maybe the tannins are slightly um, austere. I I thought the Cantemara was much uh, was slightly better balanced. But it's interesting. You know, good tasting notes on that. Yeah. I can't wait to show you all the beautiful Chateau. During rehearsal, I was just blown away by how gorgeous it is. Yeah, uh, you'll see that it, again, fairy tale that. Chateau. Yeah. Look at the ivy uh, growing on the outside. That's the red. That's not paint. That's actually ivy. That's, That's like in the Christmas autumn. To us right yeah, now. isn't that gorgeous? So beautiful. It's such a it's such a gorgeous thing. Then that's the main gate saying Lascombe. Mm. Then we move on to the barrel. And if we were in Bordeaux, we could go in the barrel and we would get exactly this. Isn't that nuts? Wow. But we're in Hong Kong, so we can just look at the photos. More of the wines aging in barrel. And as I said, the wines we're tasting now came straight from there. They call that the Chez in, uh, in French, where they keep the barrels. That's the over, that's um, the warehouse. That is such so, an experience. Isn't that a, it's really, it just popped into my mind. That's like crazy. We're here in Hong Kong yeah. tasting barrel samples. We, it's like, you know, Star Trek or something. Like <laughs> beam me up or something. Exactly. It's nuts. Teleported to yeah. us. That is fantastic. Well, we still have one, yeah, one more, more to go. Yeah, one more to go. So now we're moving even farther north. This is about 35 minutes north of Lascombe, one of the most northern uh, chateaux in Bordeaux in Santa Step. Again, mostly uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. As I remember, the blend was um, 60 Cabernet Sauvignon and 40% Merlot. And, but I think you'll find the wine is very structured. Oh. I remember it Thank you. when I tasted it in, uh, in April, and it had a lot of um, richness and tannin. Let's see what you think. I gave you more. I'm not, I'm not trying to get you drunk, okay? <laughs> but anyways... I do see some of our online friends also getting some pretty generous portions to yourself. Yeah, well, they have it all to themselves. <laughs> Esther, how are you feeling? You're yeah. enjoying the wine tasting so far. Yes. Yeah, I enjoy the wine tasting. Yeah. Really I'm going to come yeah. to you about how your impression is for the fifth wine. Have you opened the fifth one yet? Yeah, yeah, open already. It's so rich. Okay, what can you smell? Yeah. It's very rich, yeah? Yeah. That's interesting, um, and it's rich too okay. because I find you can you can almost sense the alcohol a little bit, Ooh. the ripeness, which isn't bad. Very good. How, now taste it. It's some berries and yeah. Okay. Nice. I'm gonna come back to you for your tasting notes. I also want to come to Jasmine on what you make of our fifth and last wine to be tasted today. Um, I really like it. It's um, a lot of black currants and raspberry. How do you find the tannins? Do you find it aggressive? I find a lot of tannins there, and it really fills your mouth. I almost, when you get tannins like that, we say it's velvety in texture. Ooh. So it has a really velvety texture. And I like mm. how in the beginning, from the beginning to the end, you, you at first the impact on your palate, and then you drink it it right away you get just tan in the whole time but so polished and beautiful mm. it's 
like yeah, I feel cashmere like it's very sweater. Smooth. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. That's what wine does to you. You have a couple glasses and you start saying articulate things <laughs> like that. <laughs> if you're still able to articulate, that's what makes you a wine critic, though. <laughs> you're probably right. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it. Uh, let's take a look at the chateau as well, hey? Yeah. So uh, it's a really gorgeous chateau, Félin Segur. Um, that's the bottle. I like the bottle, too. Very classic. I recently drank the 89. It's beautiful. On the right is the owner. He's a shipping magnate. And on the left, um, Valerie is the uh, is the manager. She's the general manager. She's super dedicated. Mm. There's the chateau. They paint the barrels. That's not paint. That's actually red wine. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they put it there because uh, if wine comes from the barrel, it doesn't stain it. Oh. That's the chateau. Is that insane? That's so gorgeous. Beautiful. There she is again in the beautiful vineyards. There they're racking wines, moving wine from one barrel to another. And there it is across from the pond. It's really majestic and, and serene place, much wow. like the wines. Also, Phelan's a, pr a pretty good value. It's normally around 250 to 300 a bottle, and it ages very well. Wow. That's what I like about all the wines, or let's say modern Bordeaux, is that the wines you can drink young, mm. but you can also um, age. I think that that's fantastic. Very precise wines. Wow. This is such a treat. I mean, we don't really get this kind of experience. No. If we were just everyday wine lovers. So thank you, James. No. How did you like the tasting, Allison? Are you are you a dedicated uh, barrel taster now? Well, I would love to try some more if I can get my hands on them for sure. But I feel like, you know, you do need to put a little bit of imagination into predicting how they will taste like after That's they've right. been bottled, maybe give them a few more years. And then, you know, having that credit to think about what they're going to be but like in that's the future. really uh experience like i said i've been tasting from barrel since 1983 so i can look at a young wine and then understand how it's going to um, age and mm. maybe when it's going to be the right time to taste it uh, as i said a great wine is great from the beginning i think all these wines are are, are top quality but then they're good also straight into the bottle then 10 30 40 50 years and um, that's really the sign of a fantastic year like 2020. Wow. I'm sure that you all have some awesome questions for James. So let's open up to the Q&A. If anybody has a question for James, you can go ahead and raise your hand and we can go ahead and ask James. Uh, John, right away, go for it. <laughs> um, actually, I have two questions. Uh, one is, uh, and it's probably difficult for you to answer, but which is the most beautiful uh, winery you have visited in Bordeaux. In my case, it's uh, Chateau Smith Out Lafitte in Martelac, uh, which is a really beautiful yep. fairy tale property and a massive underground um, wine storage area. So, in your case, I know you visited probably all of them. <laughs> so, uh, which is your yeah, no, favorite, uh, most beautiful not, one? <clears throat> not all, because last count, there's 10,000 of them. <laughs> but, I, but I have visited quite a few. And um, it, and I just popped into my head, so I'll go with my first impression. But I okay. guess Chateau Margaux is pretty spectacular. The Palladium architecture, all white building. And then after that, it would probably be um, Lafitte. But mm -hmm. those are really majestic um, chateau. And I think where you, it's just a unique place on Earth, on planet Earth. I like to call Earth planet Earth when we're... Oh, tasting wine. <laughs> Thank you, Arjun, for your question. We've got time for one more question. Does anybody else have a question for James today? All right, Esther, go ahead. Yeah. Is Empreneur a good investment? I would like to know. Yes, yeah, so you hear me? as I said, mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, absolutely. I think Empreneur is a, is a good investment some years, and it's less good in other years. It depends on the initial pricing. For example, uh, 2019, uh, due to the pandemic and the um, economic situation, mm -hmm. when it was released last year, prices went down 20 or 30 percent, depending on the chateau. And if you bought early, they've already gone up. Mm. So it was a good investment. 2020, less so, because this year the economy was doing better and wineries mm, uh, yeah. charged more. Right. So yeah. um, it depends on the year. You need to really study it and um, then also buy early to uh, make money on the investment. Otherwise, you can buy. The earlier you can buy, 
Uh, it's like anything else. If you were buying a house in Hong Kong and you bought an apartment uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago and you sell it today compared to, you know, buying one um, mm. at the moment. Got it. We've got plenty of questions in the chat boxes as well. So let's come to one right now. Uh, online, somebody asked, can I buy per bottle or does it have to be cases in terms of on premiere? Yeah, uh, that's actually a good question. Uh, generally speaking, you buy on premiere uh, by the case. Right. Uh, years ago, it was only 12 bottle cases, but now they're actually uh, six and even three. Oh. And I've seen some with very expensive wines like First Gross, like Lafitte, uh, Marco, or whatever. Some wine mer merchants will offer the chance to buy one bottle of each and do a mixed case. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. But, now but one thing to always remember is the big advice on En Premier is make sure you buy from a reputable wine merchant. Right. Like there's lots of stories, particularly in the US, where people bought En Premier. It means you're giving your money before you can get the wine and you're supposed to be delivered in two years. Wow. And guys just run away with the money and you don't get your wine. So stick with the well-known names, Watson's, uh, Carey Wines, Berry Brothers, people that have been in the business a long time that you can rely on. Now we know. Thank you, James. No, sure, my pleasure. I also need to say a big thank you because you've been very generous for providing us this awesome prize for our giveaway. No, no, so I'm looking forward to welcoming. Let's get to it. We have got a prized question for everybody. Listen very carefully and then type in the chat box. Answer it right away. The 10 fastest responses, what happens to be the correct answer, will be able to win yourself two tickets to jamesuggling.com masterclass, where you can be having a close encounter just like me with James. <laughs> All right. The question is, the on-premier that we've been discussing during the class today, it belongs to which year? Is it A, 2019, B, 2020, or is it C, 2021? Go ahead and type Good luck, everybody. Participants of this online game must be residents of Hong Kong, and you have to be 18 years old or above. Perhaps yeah. you'll be able to ask James some wine tasting notes directly when you attend the classes, too. Absolutely, I'll be there, obviously. So look forward to welcoming you there. Excellent. Good. Once again, thank you, James, so much for your hospitality, for welcoming us to your beautiful... Well, my pleasure. Always great to see you, Alice. Yeah, Wine Central is just such a wonderful place. And again, to celebrate this incredible moment, let's propose a toast, yeah? Everybody, if you have a glass in hand, go ahead and raise it up. And on three, two, one, let's say cheers together, yeah? Cheers. Three, two, one... Cheers. 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 Cheers! So great, thanks again. It was Cheers. amazing tasting. Cheers. Oh, it's been wonderful having you here. And again, we have incredible lineup here at the Hong Kong Wine and Dine Festival 2021 for their on-air tasting. Next up later on at 4 o'clock, we have Mr. Nelson Chow, president of the Hong Kong Simile Association Greater China, and he will be hosting an on-air tasting session with the theme of Medal Grand Cru Classe tasting. So if you have purchased your tasting kit, do join us then. Again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you here at the Hong Kong Wine and Dine Festival 2021 for the next two weeks. Cheers! Roaming from streets to alleys, restaurants and bars, and to luxury cruise ships. Experience the intoxicating moments of taste. Good wine and fine dining. Unexpected new experiences are waiting for you. Hong Kong Wine and Dine Festival On Air Tastings is held for two consecutive Saturdays and Sundays. Come join me. See you there. Global wine critic James Suckling is going to teach you how to taste the pre-launched Bordeaux on Premier. The president of the Hong Kong Sommelier Association, Nelson Chow, will share his tasting experience on Medal Grand Cru. The art of blending Bordeaux wine is ever-changing. Bordeaux International accredited tutor, Corinne, will explain to you in detail. Want to make a floral cocktail? Mixologist of Quinnery, Kit Ho, and the wine expert, Nelson, will give you some great tips. 
World-class mixologist Antonio and professional chocolate taster Katie will join us to discover the art of pairing between whiskey and chocolate. We have an exhilarating second week installed for you. How the flavor of whiskey and the umami of oysters match so perfectly. Our professional spirits educator and consultant Eddie and oyster expert Chris will expose some tasting secrets. Will the taste double up when roasted tea mixed with whiskey? Mixologist Yestin and whiskey expert Kenneth will demonstrate the duet of hochicha cocktail. Jin and Hua Diao, the new taste of East meets West will be brought to you by our mixologist Alex and wine expert Nelson. How eco-friendly is the concept of sustainable bartending? Elite mixologist Agun and tasting expert Eddie will break it down for you. You will also enjoy live tasting and real-time interaction with all these masters. Watch live and on demand on one network, totally free of charge. Thank you. 